I will be sharing with you the YWAM Publishing Christian Heroes Then and Now book. This is Jacob De Shazar, Forgive Your Enemies. So I'm really excited about sharing this book with you. You guys know I am an avid fan of the Christian Hero Then and Now series. I think my favorite one from the series, my favorite book will be the Cora Tim Boom story, hearing about her and her family and Oh my gosh, when you listen to that story, hearing about her sister talk about the house and then, I, mean, I don't want to get into it, but y'all, there's so much prophecy in that book and just, it will give you chills. Anyways, um, so Corey Ten Boom is my favorite. I have read that book and listened to it, um, read it once, listened to it three times. I love hearing that story. Um, but today we're going to be talking about um, Jacob De Shazar. He's called Jake throughout the book. It was really interesting, this story. I chose this book because it talks about forgiveness. And forgiveness, I think, is something that everyone can touch on no matter their age. Everyone needs to learn how to do no matter their age. And I don't think it's a one-time lesson. You know, um, just as our faith will continue to grow, um, we will mature in all things, including forgiveness. Forgiveness when you're a new believer looks one way. Forgiveness when you're a mature saint looks another way. And so I think that it's something we should continually touch on. And I'm always amazed at how forgiveness um, can be tied into so many things. And this story in particular starts off, um, as most of the stories do, um, with a current event. And then it shoots back to the past, tells the story from the past, builds up to the present, and then goes forward from there. So it starts off with him preparing to do his amazing um, flight. He was a um, bomber plane pilot. And then it goes back, talks about his past. He came from a, not a troubled past, but he did have a, experienced a lot of separation. His father died when he was very young, um, so his mother did remarry. He had already experienced stepbrothers and stepsisters. So from there, as he grew up, he decided to join the military. And then from there, he got the opportunity to do something that was secret and, you know, G14 classified. You don't really know what it is. And we see that kind of stuff happen in TV all the time, but I'm here to tell you that it does happen in real life. Um, my daddy was in the military, and so I'd be like, hey, does this happen? He would tell me, yes, it does happen. So, yes, there are several secret missions that you won't hear anything about, things that are done under the grid that, you know, if you get caught, you're on your own type stuff. He was in one of those situations. And, you know, Jake being the strong person that he was, young and vibrant and, and you know, ready to go for it, he did not turn it down. So here he is in war. He is um, gets the opportunity to fly over Japan and do um, his thing. However, there's malfunctions. Planes are shot down and then what happens? You know, the planes are coming down. Not just him, but his whole um, area, his whole group gets taken. Of course, he doesn't find that out till later and eventually, you know, you run into people as he's a prisoner of war. So the war he was fighting, he is no longer a soldier. Now he's a prisoner. So now what? He's going through this process and, you know, usually with prisoner of war stories, um, you kind of hear him, but you don't realize how long people can be prisoners of war. He wasn't a prisoner of war for a week or a month. He was a prisoner of war for years. Um, and so having dealt with that, um, traveling from one bad prison, okay, to the next bad prison, to the next place, to the next space, going before, before judges and being judged, um, you don't understand what they're saying, being forced to sign things. You don't know what you're signing. So he had to deal with a lot. But he kept um, he, he kept himself together. And then eventually, he was able to be free from that situation, get, get saved, go out, and, and share the belief of um, the gospel of Jesus Christ and share his beliefs in those same places that he was imprisoned. I cannot even fathom um, the strength that it would take to do that. But God is so faithful to us that even when we feel like we're at the lowest of the lowest of the low, really, if you just stick with him and get through it, you will realize that it is preparation for other things. I mean, think about the Bible in itself. The Some of the greatest passages in the Bible were written, you know, when people are imprisoned, you know, and they're, and they're sitting amongst filth and, and disgusting nastiness, but they... They are still have joy and they are sharing scriptures with us that have surpassed, you know, the length of time any of us will ever live um, because that message is still empowering as it was way back then and still empowering today. Um, I feel the same for the testimonies of the believers in the Christian Heroes Then and Now series. Yes, their stories were awesome. Yes, their stories were magnificent in the early 1900s or the late 1800s or the middle 1996 or whatever their story um, comes to pass. I feel like those testimonies are great then, but I feel like they're even greater um, when your story can live 
longer than you and it encourages another believer. So you may be gone, but your story has the ability to live longer than your testimony and in your faith and your belief has the ability to live longer than you. And that's what I think is shared through the Christian Heroes Then and Now series. So if you have not um, had an opportunity to try a book, I would suggest that you do. These are great family read alouds. These are great um, to do studies with. These are great in Sunday school. I really do think it's a it's a nice wind down if you're in a co-op and you have opportunity to read, um, especially if you're doing a book club or something like that. These Christian Heroes series are phenomenal. I definitely think that you should look into them. So to pair with this, and you know, and it's not school if you just read a book, right? You have to do something. You got to have some paper, right? So um, with this series, you have the opportunity to also um, get their unit study curriculum guide. So it is a digital download. Um, once you get the product, now my download, I'm not sure if everybody will get it this way. Mine was a little awkward to get to. I don't, I believe that, um, your version will be a bit easier to get to. I think it's just like one click access. Mine was a bit awkward to get to, but other than that, it was, um, it wasn't any issues, but I like it because it comes with questions. So you get questions for every single chapter and not just, did you like it? Yes or no, but things that you can ask and that all ages can answer. Um, that's one thing that I do when we do our reading as a family, which we read this book as a family. When we do our reading as a family, from the three-year-old up, everybody must give an answer. Um, so she, could, my little daughter could easily tell me what she liked, what she didn't like. She could easily say what her favorite part was. So I definitely suggest that you include the whole family um, when you're doing these stories as well. There's also some activities that you can do. Now, of course, a couple of worksheets are provided, like there's some map activities. Um, there's a nice, fun Japan fact sheet because that's where this book was located. Now, there you go. I just included geography. So not only are you reading, but you're including geography. If you get that map out and bust out some of that longitude and latitude, okay, you are just really taking it in there. So we um, were able to do that, label the map, and follow him as he went through the different areas of Japan when he, um, when he could recognize where he was or where it was safe where he was because, of course, he really didn't know. Um, as he was going through it until later. There's also several different options that they give you with activities in the um, student explorations part of the unit um, study curriculum guide. And so there's essay options, there's art options. One of the fun things that we did was origami. Um, I was able to find a really fun origami book on Amazon and get the papers from there too. My favorite thing though was arts and crafts and they suggest making a plane. Now we didn't have the opportunity to do a model plane, but I went to Dollar Tree and Dollar Tree had a um, set where you could take a, it's a runway for paper planes. So I found a paper plane book at Five Below. And we were able to pick a paper plane to make and then lay out the runway and, you know, fly our paper planes. Um, so that was really fun. You know, it's a, it's a fun way to do it. It's not necessarily exactly what was given here. But that's the great part about homeschooling is the flexibility. So, yes, we could make the model plane, but we could still play with planes. My children, my younger children got it. My oldest son got it. It worked out right. I had a good time, you know, so it worked out really, really great. Um, I like how this, um, the guide gives you in-depth things you know so it's a one-stop shop you don't have to worry about trying to figure out how to make a school lesson out of it I like how everything's all there for you um, pictures everything the only thing that I added again was the couple things I got from Dollar Tree and Five Below and then we also have a timeline so we use that to kind of track what was going on in the war outside of the area of Japan like what was going on in the world with this war um, and other participants so we kind of see where they were as the war was winding down um, before his release. So it was really um, a really good fun lesson that gave us an opportunity to step away from the box curriculum and just focus on something different but yet we're still learning. I think that's my favorite thing about homeschool. We can put the box curriculum down and just pick up something and let that be our unit and we're still learning. So. That's it. That's all I have for you guys today. I definitely recommend it. Of course, always check below, um, right down in the description box in the goodie box, as I call it. There you're going to find a link to this book. You'll find a link to the unit study um, curriculum guides. You will find a link to the Schoolhouse Teachers blog post. There you'll see how other um, homeschooling families picked out different books. You'll see the books that they chose. 
and um, from this series or from another series and what they chose to do with them. And then I'm also going to have a blog post for you as well. If you don't want to go through and click, 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 you can just click on my blog post and it will have everything housed for you nice, neatly packaged. So you can see that and then get some close up pictures of the guide and all that good stuff. But I definitely recommend this story as well as all the others. I have not had a Christian Heroes in and out book that I haven't enjoyed. All right. And these books are available in physical books. They're also available in audio. Um, audio is awesome because you get to hear the different voices. So those are really entertaining for the kids, especially if you're riding in the car. All right. So that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you in the next video. Happy homeschooling. Thank you.